Elon Musk is challenging the CEO of Twitter to a public debate around fake accounts and spam. Joining us now to talk about that, all things media, is Sarah Fisher, Axios media reporter. Uh, do you think that Parag Agarwal, the CEO of Twitter, is going to take Elon Musk up on that? I wouldn't. <laughs> well, I think it's going to be an interesting debate. I mean, at the heart of it, Elon Musk is out here saying, look, I think you misled me which is what's leading me to think I can pull out of this deal. Of course, Agarwal and Twitter is arguing, we didn't mislead you. You waived your rights to due diligence. And I think what it's going to come down to ultimately is this judge likely is going to side with Twitter. It does not seem, from my reading of what that counterclaim looks like, that Elon Musk has a great argument to be made here. But it's interesting that he's going to go all in on that aspect of it, the misleading about bots. He's not talking about pulling out of this deal because his business is suffering or like that continuing this kind of attack that he's been doing for months, that it's a numbers problem. Okay, here's the sensitivity around the debate. They can both be right, I think. And hear me out, Sarah. This thing called Twitter audit, I ran one last night on my own account. I love all my followers are the best. I found out that about 30% are maybe either fake or inactive. So that's a key thing, because what's the difference between a fake account or a spam bot and someone who created an account, found Twitter worthless, and hasn't been on it for two years, but never deleted their account. The, the, those don't count, but they kind of do. But none of that matters for this deal. Elon Musk could have requested information about the users before signing the agreement, but he didn't. He waived his rights to due diligence. So you could argue all you want about what the exact number is. The challenge here for Elon Musk is if he had an issue with that, he should have approached it before the deal. What he's essentially arguing is that the number that Twitter provided to the SEC, I believe in February, when it disclosed that less than 5% of its accounts were spam, that that number was misleading challenge here is that Twitter provided Elon Musk a hose, a fire hose of data to be able to check it himself, and he himself hasn't even been able to disprove it. I think that it's going to be a hard time for us lawyers to argue what you're saying, that there's fuzziness in the user accounts when ultimately Elon Musk didn't have, you know, any questions about it when he signed this $44 billion agreement yeah. months ago. Yeah, but if, if, you, if, you, if you're claiming X billion number of users and 30%, yeah, they logged in a couple years ago, they got two followers, they went back to Facebook, they don't, I mean, they're not looking at ads, they don't matter to advertisers, and they should not be included in some of the, the financial numbers that you would use to justify paying the $44 billion. Or do you, do you think this is all just kind of a gimmick to lower the price or fully get out? No, I mean, I... I just want to clarify something uh, to what you said about they're all looking at ads. What Twitter has said is that it's monetizable daily active users of that uh, you know group, less than 5% of them are spammer or bots. And that matters because that's the group oh. of users that ads are being exposed to. Now, there's a question and an argument to be made that of Twitter's massive user base, the larger percentage of them are spammer bots. But that's not the argument that's being so made. So this here. is the 